All right, so this is an example of how we can um, <clears throat> take a bug and use test-driven development when we fix the bug. So we have this uh, bug here where directory structure is not preserved. Um, uh, essentially, there's uh, operations happening to a uh, archive, create our archives, um, and we need to make sure uh, we realized that we weren't, uh, we didn't have any sort of directory structure in the archive that we created, and so we need to make sure that that uh, we maintain directory structure. So uh, here's what we're going to do. So we're going to, in this case, we have um, the fix already, um, and it's in the archive operations. Um, so, uh, this is what the fix looks like. So, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to write the test, right? So, we're going to go back. Um, uh, so, we're going to revert until before we had, uh, so because we're going to pretend, you know, like we're writing the code, right? So, get check out. Uh, we'll just rebase. Uh, we'll check out. So we're going to revert back to, you know, before when the bug existed, right? Okay, so pre-patch, right? So now we're just going to go and we're going to test. Uh, we're going to write a test case. Um, and we are going to say test. All right, so test our tar operations and test extract tar ops. And now we're going to write a test case that helps us catch this bug, right? So the bug is, um, where'd it go? So this is what we're looking at. This is what exists now. And if we fix the bug, this is what it's going to be like. All right, so test, directory structure not preserved. So test, um, archive, creation. All right, so let's right, so instantiate from our uh, test case class, um, test, Preserve directory structure. All right. And we got tar and we've got zip. All right, so we're going to do the tar one first. So where is our tar archive? So make tar archive and make zip archive. So let's look at our function here. Input directory path, output file path. All right, so we're going to call the function. First, we're going to need to create First, we're going to go ahead and create a temporary directory uh, with all the stuff in it that we care about here. So we use the temp file module for that in the standard library. And so we're going to actually, you know, yeah. Um, we're going to go ahead and make our input directory path. And we're going to put it under tempter. And so tempter is going to hold both our input directory path and our output file path. Um, all 
and we'll just name these consistently just to keep everything easy. Now we'll create our files or create our directory tree. Uh, variables for our inputs and outputs. And this is our temporary directory to work in. Uh, that way we don't clutter our file system with stuff that we only need just for this test case. All right, so <clears throat> let's look at this bug. Um, all right, 11.98. So this is the example structure that we've been given here. All right, so let's just create something like this. And, and we don't really need to do this whole thing. We just need to make sure that a tree structure is preserved, right? So let's see. Preserve while creating a zip slash targ of directory structures not preserved. And then we see it's flat here. So, all right, so we just need to make sure. Oh. We just need a single. Um, it's like our minimal case to reproduce the bug. What's going on here? Wait, okay. Whatever. Input directory path dot and pass so So the way that I am figuring out um, and file one, all right. All right, so this is our minimal working example here. Right, so we have our directory structure, so we have our output file path, we have our input directory path, and so this is the top level dir, child dir, so we can create both of those at once by using the path of make dir. Um, uh, we can uh, then create this file and we can just make it empty, right? And so now we'll have a multi-level uh, directory structure here. So we should be able to pass this to make tar archive, and then we'll observe that output file path uh, we're going to need to read it, um, and all right, and just always reference, um, you know, the standard library documentation or whatever documentation that you're using here um, to make sure that you know you know what to do and what what to call and it looks like it's git members not members all right so So um, now here's where we're going to do our final check. So. Test. So now here, the final assert is assert that 
uh, the paths in the tar, the created tar file, are the same or are what are the same as the or the the directory structure. So we're testing that the directory structure. Of the created tar file is the same as the um, as you know our input directory path. Okay, and we'll just leave this blank for now. And we're doing nope. need to be async. Got import temp file. Got to import path lib. Got to import tar file. All right, there we go. So that's our directory structure in the, of the of the tar file, All right? So, uh, so now we got to fill in our list. So top of the Ah, uh, okay, I see what the bug is here. So the bug only happens when we're extracted. So let's go ahead and extract this um, <clears throat> as well here. So, because you can see that it looks like we've added all the paths, um, including, uh, so the, the bug here is essentially that we've uh, gone through and added every single path. And so what ends up happening is that we overwrite um, the previous ones and we only get stuff at the top level. So if we extract, we should see um, that everything is, is only at the top level. So let's go ahead and extract it too, and then we'll we will have our bug, and then we can validate from there. So output uh, file path, output directory path. Now we can now uh, compare the listing of the output directory path. Looks like we didn't get anything in our output directory, so that's not good. Hmm. But directory path. Hard extract all of the path. Hmm. 
well, in this test case, it looks like we didn't get anything at all. So we're failing for apparently a slightly different reason here. Well, so what we found out here is that I'm seeing a different bug, I guess. Maybe because there were no files with contents. Weird, we don't, we seem to be hitting a uh, bigger problem. Even so, um, the point is we write the test case. Um, so you write the test case. Now we're going to apply the patch. So let's go back to where we were. So basically, um, so you write the test case and you provided there was only one bug, you would assert the correct values here. So let's just go ahead and do that now. Um, so this is going to be uh, it's relative to, so let's see. So we're going through all the paths and what we should see and we're going to do this so this test passes on Windows or Linux. So what we should see here is top level directory, right? for that. Right, this is our expectation. Right, is that when we uh, list the contents of the directory, uh, we end up with top level dir Top of dir slash child dir one, top of dir slash child dir one slash file one. Um, and we're using OS path join just because, uh, you know, if we run this test on Windows, then we're going to have backslashes instead of slashes. So we're going to do it this way. Um, that way it'll pass on Windows too. So, uh, and then we used relative to to make sure that our paths are getting chopped off and they aren't um, absolute paths because output directory path is probably going to be an absolute path uh, to slash 10 on Linux. So, um, all right, okay, so we extract. Right now it doesn't seem like extracting is doing. Oh, well, you know why? Because I moved this outside the tempter, so there's nothing in that directory, obviously. Okay, uh, let's run the test again. Yay! All right, and let's go ahead and sort these two while we're at it. All right, yeah, now you see it's really not exactly what I was expecting here. Let's see, is this what the bug says? Mm, yeah, we're not even seeing top level dir here, which is interesting. So we should be seeing at least top level dir in the output, but. So it looks like child dir one file dir, so it's dropping top level dir. Entirely, it looks like. Should be the same, but let's just. Yeah, okay. Oops. So anyways, now we have our test. 
Um, yeah, so it's just drop. It's dropping that top. It's dropping the top older, which is interesting. So it's not preserving the directory structure and it's dropping the top level directory. Interesting. Anyway, so here we have our test case now. Um, all right, so now let's go ahead and, and check out the, we're just going to copy this. We're going to check out the, uh, what is our character structure tension patch? No. Archive op, yeah, Durster, yeah. There we go. Yes, okay, so this is the correct now. So this has this has the patch, so this is the fix here on the left. And there's our test case that we wrote. So now basically we write the test case, shows the wrong behavior. Now we write the fix, and instead of going through how we wrote the fix, we uh, we are applying the fix from an existing commit. So ideally, what we would do is we would. So this is an example where we wrote the fix, and we didn't have a test case associated with the bug. So the ideal workflow here is you write the test case, you make sure that it fails and produces the exact same behavior as your bug report. And then you write the fix, and then all of a sudden the test case will pass, right? Because that's um, that's that's the test-driven development. So yep, that test case passes. All right, sweet. So let's go ahead and uh, extend this for zip archives here. Um, So now we've got our test case. Um, start directory structure. Let's run them both. All right, and uh, I got hit with the same bug. So this is why we're subclassing from async test case. Oops. There we go. All right, so this is how we use test-driven development to solve this, uh, you know, to validate our, our, our implementation and solve our bug. So now we've got the test case here and then I'll commit this up. All right, great.